Well, welcome back. Joining us to talk about Oracle's multi-cloud strategy is Karan Bata, Senior Vice President of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Karan, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, happy to, happy to be here. Yes, so let's just dive right in. What does Oracle mean by multi-cloud done right? Yeah, look, I think multi-cloud's been around for a while now. We've been doing multi-cloud for almost half a decade now. We started with Azure. Mostly it was to try to break down a lot of the barriers in the past that customers had, whether it's moving data around, uh, whether it was running different workloads. But really what, it, what we're talking about this week is really to do with our cloud database strategy. It's to give customers <clears throat> extreme choice and flexibility into how they deploy their database. So, you know, we talked about all the great feature sets that 26AI has, right? Well, all of our customers should have access to that, whether they're running on AWS or Google or Azure or OCI, or even on-premise with things like dedicated region. So what we're talking about is now we have over 200 regions where you can actually deploy Oracle database services, but then also commercial flexibility. You know, customers require and have a need to be able to deploy, not just deploy, but also purchase and consume in a very simplistic manner. So now we have multi-cloud universal credits. Uh, it allows them to literally you know, commit once, get a single price, get a single discounting commitment, and then just consume it wherever they want. Choice and flexibility. Choice and flexibility. We're going to talk about more of that in a second, but I just want to note we have been doing multi-cloud for a while, and last year we kind of put a lot of the frosting on the cake with our relationship with AWS, uh, Google, um, and in that time, we have had a lot of customer uptake. What's different a year later from those big announcements? Yeah, I think, honestly, it's just making sure that we continue to do the things that we talked about last year and the year before and the year before that, <laughs> right? Which is, we wanted to make sure we have the partnerships, but then second, we wanted to make sure we have the right integration. So like you mentioned AWS. With AWS, if you run your backups, they go to S3. If you are moving data around AWS, we have things like Zero ETL. So we're doing all of the integrations possible with our cloud providers, but then additionally, it really comes down to regional availability. So, you know, we have something like 30 plus regions that are available today across the three providers, and we have an additional 30 plus regions that are coming over the course of the six, 12 months. So really, what's changed? It's everything, but it's nothing, <laughs> right? right? It's, it's more of the same. We're doubling down on our commitment to provide more regions, more flexibility, more choice. So literally, there's no reason why you can't deploy an Oracle database anywhere, and there's no reason why you can't consume it the way you want to. Yeah, I want to talk, we're going to go off road here a little yep. bit from the multi-cloud uh, because I think it speaks to a larger issue about choice. I, you're going to have to help me if you can remember, Clay said on stage that there's something like 7,000 different configurations of service levels you can get in Oracle Cloud. Something like that. Yeah, so, so what he means by that really is like, we have what we call flexible infrastructure, right? So today, if you go to, let's say, like AWS, right, or Azure, whatever, you click a button and you say, I want to launch a computer. You get, I don't know, like infinite number of choices, and they're all like individual choices. They're not specifically tuned to what you want. So let's say you're running an Oracle database workload. You have fixed shapes that you have to pick. So either you get too many cores or not enough, or you get too much memory or not enough. And so you're, you're all, always battling with like, okay, well, what's the right size and shape that I got to pick? And you need like a decoder ring to be able to figure <laughs> out what is it that I'm actually going to do. Either you're wasting uh, money and, and uh, you know, uh, VMs, or you're not getting enough and your workload's not performing. What he means by thousands of choices is you literally tell us, what do you want to do? You want ARM, you want Intel, you want AMD. You pick your architecture, you tell us the number of cores, you tell us how much memory you want, and we build something on the fly for you that's custom built. 
but it also is within the confines of a host, which means a, a physical computer. So we get the same performance characteristics. We take care of the availability. We take care of the cost. The cost is still low. So we build essentially a flexible infrastructure based on what you need. And we take that concept for compute and we marry it to things like load balancer or networking. We marry it to things like block storage. So we, we, we call this flexible infrastructure. It's like, it's almost like a la carte, you know, when you go to a restaurant, right? Versus going to a diner and finding like 5,000 choices. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think, you know, the other thing that I observe is we have uh, multiple LLMs that people can choose from. Uh, with our AI data platform, you know, we're not just saying only your data in our database. We're, and with multi-cloud, we are saying you can run your database in other clouds. So we're, I think, acknowledging that their choice should be very specific to what they need. Yeah, look, you know, our Oracle AI data platform is really a, a combination of three major pillars, I would say. It's the data. It doesn't just have to live in Oracle database. You can bring your own data, so to speak, right? It can live in Oracle database, but it can also point to other places you're storing your data. Could be other vendors, could be other clouds, right? Or on-premise. Then the second piece of that is agents. You can bring your own agents, or you can build your own agents, or you can use the agents that we already give you, right? For example, the Fusion agents has hundreds of agents you can build. And then third is the model space. You can bring your own model or you can use the ones that we provide as part of Gen AI service. And yeah, you pick the model that you want. You can pick Gemini, XAI, whatever model choose that you want to do, you can do that. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And I wish we had more time to talk about this because flexibility choice, that's key. Fritz took all my time and questions. So now I know. <laughs> we have to go. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you.